uh, even as we have been celebrating just our good Abba, yes. Father, you know, mm. as people, mm. we don't have perfect parents. Mm. No matter how good yes. your father is, there is always some gap, mm -hmm. something that he doesn't quite do well. Mm. But we have a perfect father, yes. Yes. one yes. Yes. in whom there is no fault, there is no lack, there mm. is no gap of um, incorrectness. He is always our good, good father mm -hmm. and even when we, we struggle with our earthly fathers, we can always look to him because he will be always there. He has promised never to leave us nor forsake us. He has yes. promised to love us from now into eternity. Mm -hmm. He's just good. And for us who are flawed humanity, we still want to say happy Father's Day to yes. all the fathers that happy are Father. out there. Mm -hmm. yep. Because trust yeah. me, Father's Day is just one of those things that, that we need mm -hmm. to celebrate because yes. there are many fathers who are just making big differences in the lives of their children. And we I say again, we honor you. You know, being a father is a mixture of excitement and anxiety. But is it is God who has given us just this great influence over our children's lives and he himself represents himself as a father and because of this great influence he has told us as people us to honor our fathers and mothers that we may live long in the land here's what the scripture says honor your father and mm -hmm. your mother that your days may be long in the land which the lord your god gives you and this is the first command with a promise now it comes is the first command that comes with a promise. So the, the promise, the, the command to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart doesn't come with a promise. The, the command not to have any graven images don't come with a promise. But the promise to honor your father and mother come is the first command that yeah. comes with a promise. Yes, so obviously yes. it must be very important to God. And if you know anything about TSC, if it is important to God, it is important to us. So respect you and honor. <laughs> Right? <laughs> to all the fathers that are out there. And I'm privileged to have some fathers with me. And I want to honor them also. So to my right, I have immediate right, I have Pastor Maurice. Honor, sir. Oh, good morning, Pastor Dwight. And good morning, TLC family and friends. Mm -hmm. And beside him, we have mm -hmm. Minister Kevin. Good morning, sir. Everyone, thank you, Pastor Dwight. And happy, happy Father's Day to all the fathers watching. Enjoy your day. Yeah, man. And then to, to round it off, we have Pastor Paul. Good morning, I'm, sir. An I'm honor. Good morning, sir. I'm honored to be here and thank you for having me, especially <laughs> with this backyard bash. Oh, awesome. We're all, we're all very glad to be here. Awesome. And our chef extraordinaire has done a really sumptuous <laughs> meal yes, and yes. has put it right in front of us. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be very hard to concentrate. Yes. And I keep focusing because of the sumptuous meal in front definitely, of us. Definitely, definitely. So as we begin, gentlemen, we are just going to be talking about father things and, and men things. And I wanted to start by, with an observation that I made. Mm -hmm. As I research fathering and, and how we have approached fatherhood as a, as a world, I came to realize that it's not only until the, the mid-1900s mm -hmm that the role of the father and his integral part that he played in the family was universally recognized. Yeah, it's almost right. like before that, it was ignored. The father was not sort of important and, mm -hmm. and um, from multiple levels. And I wondered, I just wanted to throw that out and ask what you guys thought about that, if you have, any, if you have ever thought about it. You know? Is that so true, Pastor Dwight? Because even in Jamaica, we have realized that there's a de-emphasis of the role of the fathers. Because unlike other Commonwealth states, we have seen where in Jamaica, it's not yet mandatory for a father's name to be on the child's birth certificate. Wow. Mm. And this has been you know, very impactful negatively on our society. Right. You know? right. In fact, you know, research has shown that even up to recently, there's a high percentage of children still being registered without their father's name. Although they have been taught, you know, in different circles, it has not yet become mandatory. Right. Wow. You know, so you're sort of agreeing with the, with the de-emphasis on the role of fathers. So that even in Jamaica, from an institutional mm -hmm. kind of level, there's not this kind of emphasis. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. And what can happen to fathers? Sometimes they just, you know, don't take up their responsibility of being a father and yeah. may decide to just migrate and just, you know, yeah. Yeah. Don't do yeah. it's, it's interesting you said that because in um, just before independence in Jamaica, 1962, we had a mass migration 
of parents mm -hmm. um, going to the UK and um, seemingly to make a, a, a you know, better themselves mm -hmm. and certainly for their family. And a big part of that, fathers were a big part of that exodus. And I can just imagine the effect that that would have on a child mm -hmm. that was left here in Jamaica. Um, mothers and grandmothers would therefore have to be raising children. And as you mentioned um, earlier, that fathers probably never saw their role as being vital for the upbringing of yeah. the children. Yes. And it would have been easy for them to make the transition, to see themselves as just remitting money back to the child. Right. But it must have had a devastating effect right. on children. Right. right. So I'm just, I'm just looking at the, the pattern. So you're saying institutionally they were, but you're also now saying that societally, just in our society, we never start to grow up in the early 1900s or mid 1900s with the thought that the father was so critical in the life of yeah. a child. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know, the point that um, Pastor Paul made and the time period in which he refers to the 1950s is very significant. It was during that period that research was done um, by some researchers at UA. And the title of the research, in fact, says it all mm -hmm. My Mother Who Fathered Me. Mm -hmm. And when they looked at the variety of communities, they discovered that the how impactful the presence of a father was that we right. there wasn't a resident father whether or not that father was married or not but when father wasn't there wasn't mm -hmm. resident that those families tended to be um very exposed and the children subject to very negative outcomes poverty mm -hmm. you know tendency for delinquency and that kind of thing right. Right. so you know the research shows right the fact that the, just the very presence of a father right. Um, impacts our society and one of the things we know now right is that there's a lot of data from the Department of Correctional right. Services that a tremendous amount a significant proportion of those mm -hmm. they have in the prisons yeah. for serious crimes have had very little contact with their father they don't know their father or right. you know the father is an occasional right. person yes. in their lives yeah. Yeah. so the fact that the very presence or absence of a father Right. Um, it's something that is actually measurable and we see the impacts right. in our society right. every day. Right. So, so the reason why it came to me you now is that if institutionally the role of a father is not being reinforced, mm -hmm. if socially the role of the father is not being reinforced, and even from the educational basis, yeah. if we have discovered the role of a father late in the 1950s, 60s, that means that we, we have not been communicating to, to men just in their necessity in a family. So, so men would not, would not pay that attention mm -hmm. to their children. But I want to just thank God that I see the shift coming, mm -hmm. that the, the, the whole thing has been changing. Amen. And the research is showing, um, mm -hmm. study after study is showing that there's just a revival or a resurgence of men just, just paying that attention. As a matter of fact, um, one person says that there seems to be a shift in mm -hmm. how men are, are viewing their role in families. And it says today's dads are spending more time yeah. and more care and being more loving towards their children awesome. as ever before. So there's yeah. a shift there. Yeah. Another yeah. research says there is a fatherhood awakening that, for example, this is US statistics, that the number of dads at present at the birth of their ch children had risen from 27 to 90% today That's as great. compared Amazing. to 25 Amazing. years ago. That's so awesome. so there's a shift. I, I want you to hear that if you are a father online mm -hmm. listening to us, you are a part of the shift generation. Mm -hmm. You are a part of the generation that are bringing back this, this, this presence of fatherhood. So, so, you know, in Jamaica, we say, big up yourself. You have been playing <laughs> ready, so we can talk, but, uh, Big up yourself. Big up, big up. <laughs> big up yourself. Yes. And what we need to do as fathers is just look for sources of inspiration that we can look at and say, all right, this is what a good father is like, and, and then pattern ourselves off that. And the person we want to look at this morning is, is Job. Now, Job is known for a lot mm -hmm. of other things. Job is known for suffering and patience and all of those things. But when we look at it, the, the verses we read out of chapter 1, it is, it is obvious that Job is an exceptional father. Yes. And we want to glean some, some ideas from Job. And there are three ideas mm -hmm. that come from Job, and we're going to be discussing them. Um, he was a good provider, he was a good protector, and he was present in the children's life. You see, write this down as number one. The whole run of those five verses indicate that Job, uh, Job was a good provider. So we want to write this. A good father is also a good 
provider. provider. So what we did is that we went out and did a little vox pop. We asked mm -hmm. a few of our congregants what they thought about their fathers in this area, and these are their results. We're going to see it on a video now. My father paid for my school fees. My dad brought gifts when he went on trips. So, every time my dad would go away, which is like every January and February for the printing show, he would come home, take the night flight. So in the mornings when we woke up, we would go and see the suitcases open. And, you know, of course, it has all of the gifts that he brought back for us. So whether it was, you know, a new Lisa Frank folder, or Trapper Keeper folder, or the Five Star Notebook, or all of these things, Holy Pop folder, paper. And I mean, it was so exciting. And you get your new, your new school shoes. So like... When you're getting ready to go to school, yo, you throw away everything, all of the old things, and you're just packing the new things in the, in the school bag. So my sisters and I look forward to it. So every January or February when he would go away for these weekend trips, you could guarantee that he would come back with something for us. My father paid for all my school books. My dad allowed me to live rent free and I was able to save up to buy my own first house. My father paid all my hospital bills. I love my dad because he still takes me out for ice cream. I love my dad. He always gave me lunch money, plus a top up when I needed it. So I love my dad because he sacrificed so much of his time and uh, stayed at you know multiple jobs doing what he does just so that he could put me through medical school. My father allowed me to shop in the home supermarket for free. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day. Day. <laughs> I didn't know there was a name for it. Home supermarket. <laughs> yes, the yeah, home yeah, supermarket. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that one always gets me. But mm -hmm. it is just interesting how, how different people are just remembering different types of provision that the father did for them, uh, their father did for them, and just celebrating that provision. And, and it is just critical for us as fathers to be providers for our children. As a matter of fact, the Bible is just very strong on it. In Timothy, it says this, if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So irrespective of your financial position, um, the Bible just says that you need to be part of the provision for your children. I was telling these guys before that I remember when I left corporate work to go and work full time. At that time, I took a wonderful pay cut of about 75 percent and wow. and my wife at that time was still in corporate so she was earning much much more than me but mm -hmm. but it was just so Fair important response. for me to be contributing to the household finances you know and and we used to watch the books at those days and if if we were ever going to come up short i'd be intent on just finding in jamaica we call it hustling some kind of of other activity by which i could could help the finances god was good he blessed us with it. We bought a business later on and, and um, we became okay. But I was just very, it was just my focus to be part of the provision for my household because as a father, I took it very seriously that I should be a provider. Um, it, money is, money is, is important in raising right. a child, mm -hmm. but money is not the only thing and children require much more than that. And what we're seeing from Job is that he mm -hmm. did provide financially for his family. But um, as you said before, children need much more than money. Um, and Job has been able to, or Job has shown us that um, he provided much more yeah. for his children than right. just money. Right. Um, he was a man um, that God saw as just being faithful, and he walked in integrity, yeah. and he was just demonstrating all of this for his children. Mm -hmm. So by living this in the household, yeah. He was providing them with a blueprint and a pattern as to how they should live their lives. Yeah. So he was really leave, leaving a spiritual legacy for them. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, right. the, we, we, we have to leave that kind of legacy because mm -hmm. whether or not we like it, children are watching us. Of course. Mm -hmm. And they, mm -hmm. they, are, they, are, they are imitating what we do. So when Job, when it says Job was blameless and he was upright and, right. and those kinds of things, the, 
they would have seen Job's example and patterned themselves mm. of Job's example. And yeah, Titus 2, I mean. Titus 2 says that in everything, set them an example by doing what is good. Mm -hmm. And we see that Job did do that mm -hmm. for his children. Yeah. Yeah, man, Job was indeed, indeed a godly man. Yes. You know, and sometimes for us as men, sometimes we think that we are not strong to really be and live like a Job. Yeah. But I tell you that it is possible. With yes. Christ, it is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't grow up with a father, so I didn't have that initial influence of a father figure over me, guiding me day by day. But, mm -hmm. you know, God the Father is good, he's faithful. And I realized that once I started to seek him and seek him wholeheartedly, you know, he just really just trained me up how to be a good father. Amen. You know, Amen. as I sought the Lord, you know, there were certain stuff that fa fell in place. For right. example, there was growth in my, in, in, in my job at the time, you know, promotion after promotion. You know, I found my wife, I got married, and the family began. Right. You know, uh, Matthew 6.33 is always a hallmark for me, because I see where, you know, it says that, seek, seek the Lord, right? Seek the Lord. Right. But seek first the kingdom of God. And right. his righteousness and all these things, all all these these things, things will be added right. unto you. Right. And it's a hallmark for me in my life. Right. So uh, it's obvious that as you sought the Lord, and you told us earlier that you never, you never, you never knew your dad until much later in life. Yeah, so, yeah. so you never had that kind of example. But mm -hmm. you, you found that example in the Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. yes. and, the, and the Father just trained you to be a good father. Because I think you're a great dad. Mm -hmm. uh, well, Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you. I think yes. you're, you're yes. a great dad. Yes. Yes. Great dad. And, and, and your children, as I said before, our children are watching us. They, mm -hmm. they need that example mm -hmm. from us. They, they need someone to pattern themselves off. And we just need to be people of integrity. Mm -hmm. And we need to, to demonstrate to them that God is our number one. Yes. Yes. That, that, that yes. they must see that in our lives. But we, we, we provide other things for them. You, you mentioned it's not only money, we mm -hmm. provide. Another thing I think we provide for them is things like wisdom. Yes. And counsel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we have gone the road already. And what we are doing is, is helping to pass, to create a path for them. You know, the scripture says this. Good friend, follow your father's advice. Yes. So as parents, we need to just pass on wisdom. Things like how to deal with difficult situations. Yeah, man. Because nowadays, people are, in my opinion, it seems to me that when difficulty comes, mm -hmm. a lot of people just jump off the ship. Like mm -hmm. they, yes. they, they do Upstream. all kind of different yes. things. Mm -hmm. But we have to be communicating with them that difficult times are going to be coming, mm -hmm. and this is how you deal with, deal with a difficult time. Do not give up. Right. You know? yes. um, we have to be teaching them wisdom about our attitude towards things that work true mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like when they leave my house they must be prepared for the working world and and i have to give them the wisdom about what is to come and and how they are to approach that mm -hmm. um we have to deal with them with wisdom about dealing with difficult people dealing with bullies i mean the, the list could <laughs> 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 the thoughts the list could yeah. it's, all, it's on, almost on. as if you're saying that your experiences you're passing on to them like yes. you're giving them a button right that they take and they also run right. so right. we're providing so much more yeah mm -hmm. providing so much yeah. more i yeah. you know part of it you know is that it's, it's there's a simple kinds of things about relationships even in, in terms of a professional life so things like you know look the person in the face give mm -hmm. a firm handshake yes you know stand up yes. straight so right. you know, right. just, just right. things like that you know but people take so much from those first impressions you know, when we communicate those, these little things that give them little wisdom for life. Right. So, um, fathers, what we want to say is that we want you to see that this is just part and parcel of providing. That provision doesn't only have to do with money, although that is important. But there are so many other aspects that we provide for our children. And Job was obviously a good provider. But Job was more than a good provider. And we get some glimpses from that when we, we look at the passage. We see that mm -hmm. his children used to have feasts throughout the year. And, and mm -hmm. these feasts, he wouldn't go to them. His sisters, his children would go. The sisters of the brothers would go. Yeah. So it's obvious that these feasts were not like big rowdy parties, but these feasts were more like family get-togethers. Mm -hmm. And what's interesting to me is how Job 
responded to these feasts. Job, immediately after the feast, the scripture says that Job would call over the children. Mm -hmm. Here's what it says. Job would make arrangements for them to be purified. Mm -hmm. Early in the morning, he would sacrifice a burnt offering for each of them, thinking, perhaps my children have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular custom. And from this, what I see is that Job decided to be a protector. Mm -hmm. So, so just write this down if you are filling in. Mm -hmm. Good fathers protect their family. And, and protection is just one of our mainstays. That children are just looking for us as the, the muscle of the family, as Pastor John Claude said, his dad was the hero, you know? Yes. Like yeah. a superhero yeah. fighting mm -hmm. in. And, and we are just protectors of our families. So again, we just went and asked a few people what they thought about dad, dad's protectors, and I wanted to hear what they said. So my dad vetted all of my dates. So even before I got married, um, he actually interviewed Richie and Yes, it was a full interview and the first two questions I remember vividly. The first one was, what are your intentions with my daughter? And the second was, so tell me more about yourself, Richard Ennis. He's my husband today. My dad dealt with a bully who was always targeting me. My father, he gave me advice on how to be a godly spouse. My father prayed for me while I slept. I love my father because he taught me the principles of finance so that I wouldn't fall into most of the typical pitfalls that my peers did. So I really appreciate that about him. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day! Day. <laughs> so obviously there are a lot of things to protect our, family, our children from, especially in a society like ours. Um, what are your experiences in being a pro protector in your family? <coughs> well, the obvious way that comes, the other thing that comes to mind when you think of protection for your family is making sure that when you lock your door, mm -hmm. your children are on the inside. Mm -hmm. My father used to tell me that all the time. When I lock my door, you are in here. Yeah. Out there is out there. Yeah. But I am protecting yeah. you here. Yeah. So that's the obvious way. Yes. And, and also, when they are inside, we have to protect them and ensure that they are safe. Of course. For example, you know, I have younger children, so like hazardous chemicals and so I have to store away locked away so that they don't reach it easily yeah, and it, also for the sockets they all those have to be covered especially when they were just right. creeping around right. and things we definitely have to secure them both inside and when they're on the road as well yeah. Yeah, and you can't leave out the things like the spiders and the lizards and the flying oh lord the lizard <laughs> i still need to know no, why the flying, roach. Flying, the flying roach <laughs> oh god we are the protector yes. against the lizard yes. and the yes. flying yes. roach let me tell you something i am the giant slayer and <laughs> the dragon slayer in my house, right? Uh, recently, it has gotten so bad that I have to deputize my son. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, bring him, up in, bring him up in the ways of giant slaying, right? Because anytime that like, a rat comes in the house, it is interesting. Oh, God. Mm. It's interesting. With but it's children. interesting that a small lizard mm -hmm. or a flying roach is as big in their eyes as Goliath was. <laughs> <laughs> in scripture <laughs> yes i can imagine um so we are protecting so our families but <laughs> um the truth is also we 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 have to protect them in other ways yes like like for example we have to protect them by making them street mm -hmm. smart mm -hmm. right so i am mm -hmm. constantly telling the children, if you, if you see like a crowd operating in this way, you don't go towards that no. crowd. Mm -hmm. right. You go away yeah. from right, that right, crowd. Right, 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 right. Um, you, you're telling them, I allow them to, to take the bus. I carry them on the bus and allow them to take the bus because I wanted them to just see what happens on a bus mm -hmm. and how to just be more defensive, how to position yourself correctly so that they, you know, um, stuff like that. We, we protect them by telling them, by teaching them proper protocols in life, yeah. like, like True. respect your seniors. True. And the reason why I'm doing that is that I'm, I'm teaching them how to protect, how to respect authority. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm future-proofing their right. lives. Right. So that when they go in and start working for a company, 
they know how to deal mm -hmm. with the box. Uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, any any yeah, other thoughts yeah. here? You know, but one of the things that I think is very important is that uh, we sort of taught our children to analyze, to critically think about the words that they're hearing. That's so like yes, with songs, yes, yes. for yes. example, you know, it's very easy. The groove is good. You know, so but yes, but what, but what are the words saying? Do they yeah, add up yeah. to the values yeah. that you know that are, yeah. that are good? You know, so that they don't just have things come into their consciousness and come into their minds and, mm -hmm. you know, without thinking about it. And the same thing for when they hear somebody bring something to them. You know, I, I, I mean, I, I think I used to tell my daughter something to the effect that understand something, boys are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not recommending this. But <laughs> no, that has been just great for protection. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, so we, we, we are attempting to provide a, some boundaries for them mm -hmm. to help them to understand what to live mm -hmm. inside. And, and one of the areas that is sometimes ignored when it comes to protection mm -hmm. is the spiritual protection. Mm -hmm. That um, not only are the physical things needed, not only are the mental and, and the, the, the um, emotional things required, but spiritual protection is also required. That, and when we look in the scriptures and when we look at the, at the data, the role of a man mm -hmm. is just undeniable, is just unparalleled. Um, how men just help to protect their children spiritually, you know? Yeah, definitely so. Spiritual protection is very, you know, is a paramount, very, you know, in our, in our lives and also especially for our children. You know, we need to protect them daily. And one such thing, we need to understand that the Lord is our refuge and strength. He's just always there to cover us and we have to put him first. So therefore, we can do stuff like devo have devotional times with our children. Yes. Having devotional times with my daughters, I realize that it has really built them up as it relates to not having self-doubt and even fear, yeah. you know. One of my, my daughters, a four-year-old, you know, just recently she was talking about, you know, she's feeling fearful, especially at nights. And as we continue to do devotion, one day she said to me, she said, boy, daddy, you know, I no longer have fear. I gave the, my fear to the Lord. Wow. And I'm good. Wow. At four. You know, at four, awesome. can you imagine? Awesome. Yes. So, so, so definitely as fathers, we need to walk out this life. We need to live that life so that they can also see. So we need to teach them about God's love and God's grace, mm -hmm. you know, because we're priests of our household. So it yeah. should be definitely something that we are doing. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the passage that we're looking at in Job 1, one of the things that we can infer from it, you know, is that not only did Job have an ongoing spiritual concern, mm -hmm. but we can infer also that he was praying for them. Yes. You know, that's why he had that kind of concern. And, right. you know, for many of us as fathers, you know, we may not have been doing that in the past consistently or mm -hmm. per perhaps not at all, mm -hmm. you know. And we may think, boy, I, you know, I'm not a very, you know, Bible knowledge person and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But by encouragement, you know, it's just start now. Start where you are. Start simple. Start small. Mm -hmm. You know, in um, Zachariah, we speaks about don't despise the day of small things. Right. right. Um, you know, it's only recently that we have started having a little gathering with, in my family. You know, we just meet for 10, 15 minutes once a week over WhatsApp, look at a passage, we share, we pray for each other. You know, and it's now become one of those things that we really look forward to every week. Yeah. You know, so, my yeah. encouragement do, don't start now. You know, don't worry about, you know, giant spiritual things, mm -hmm. but start simple with your children. Right where you are. And start doing right. it. Um, but I, I, was, I can't tell you the amount of times I believe that uh, Pastor Jones' prayers and my prayers that have saved my children from events in life right. um, um, was mm -hmm. the thing that rescued them. And just like Pastor Maurice, we, we recently started praying together and we started to love our prayers. So we would say that we are praying for these things and mm -hmm. we start to write them down and, mm -hmm. and make a note of them. And just to see six months later when those things are answered and, mm -hmm. and how it affects um, your children's perception and the children's faith is just incredible. Mm -hmm. And you might That's be right. someone who is saying out oh there, as Pastor Maurice said, that, that I, boy, I don't know these big things. God is interested in simple prayers too. Mm -hmm. That, that the prayer doesn't have to come across as, as a giant prayer, but he will he'll accept the little things. But the truth is that it all begins with you. 
And if you want to grow in this area, you have to start to invest in your own spiritual life. And at TLC, we make a lot of things available for you to invest in your spiritual life. We have, we have life groups, we have definitely church, we have discipleship groups. And my, my, my suggestion is that you start to get involved in one of them. Start to read your Bible and God the Heavenly Father will teach you how to be a good father to your children. Another way that we can mm -hmm. protect our children is certainly putting them on the path of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Right. Um, praying and leaving them in God's hands, which is the safest place for your children to be. Right. So if we cover them under the blood and just put them in God's hands, we're assured that everything is going to be fine. So you're protecting them. Another way is also to um, model for them the path of righteousness. Right. Um, for me, I didn't just see my dad going to church. Um, I saw him there. He played an active role in church. Um, but he didn't just send me to church. He took us to church. Right. And by doing that, I, I saw his involvement. Yeah. It also, um, as I learned, so I'm doing now in my household. Mm -hmm. I am going to church. I am involved in church. And my children see this. And they are picking up on it. And they are also playing their part. And yeah. getting involved in church right, as well. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. It's interesting that you say that because the studies are showing mm -hmm. that the children who get involved in church are more likely to be successful at life. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. a stronger sense of well being way into their adulthood. Mm -hmm. They do better in school. They are less likely to get involved in drugs. They are more successful well, generally right. yeah. in life. Yeah. And the role of the father in the life of the child in that aspect is just unparalleled and undenied. So, so I looked it up and the Promise Keepers actually did some research um, earlier and it says in a family, if the father does not go to church and the mother goes to church, only one in 50 children are likely to grow in their spirituality. Okay. So the other nine, 49 are not going to go to church at all wow. and not grow in wow. their spirituality. But if the mother does not go to church mm -hmm. and the father goes to church, mm -hmm. two out of three of the children will end up in church, wow. will end wow. up growing spiritually, and will end up impacting their nation. So, so just amazing, the investment amazing. of carrying them yes. to church. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. He's not yes. talking about that the guys are pastor or anything. Just the investment of carrying them to church sort of future proofs your children. Mm -hmm. Their development spiritually, their development emotionally, their development from, from a school thing, you know? So, so I guess the takeaway from that is that we should really bring them up in the training of the Lord. Yes, you know? the takeaway from that is that, yeah. So what we do as dads just makes a huge difference in their lives. Mm -hmm. And we, you might say, boy, I'm not, I said it before, that I'm not good at praying out loud. Well, you can read some books. There's a book like <laughs> the, the Power of a Praying Parent, if you are a reader. Or, or just start to associate yourself with some, some men who can just help you to make that kind of transition. Um, as, as Kevin had said, Minister Kevin had said earlier on, you have to put the Lord first in your life. And then, and then he will start to train you just how to move ahead. You know? Okay, so, so I, I, the major takeaway that we're seeing from Job's life is that he was present. Yeah. He was very involved in his children's life. Mm -hmm. And that is very, very important. And round about now, we can say that our next fill-in is good fathers are present in their children's lives. Um, we're going to see a vox pop um, from some the children who are going to tell us how present their parents were, their father was in their life. So let's just see that. My father took me everywhere to play dominoes to the country and to work. I love my dad because we do daddy daughter it. My daddy is always encouraging me. My daddy still checks up on me after all these years. I love my daddy because he still tells me that he loves me all the time. I appreciate my dad because he loves me and hugs me a lot. But I love my father because he taught he had the sex talk with me. I, it was as awkward as you could believe it, it could possibly be, but 
uh, I definitely feel like I dodged a whole lot because I went in knowing a lot more than most of my peers did to work. Happy, Happy Father's, Father's Day, Daddy! Day. Very interesting, very interesting. Um, what we can take from the first five verses of um, what we read today in Job is that Job was very involved in his children's life. He was very present, mm -hmm. right. um, which, is, which is very, very important. He might not have attended the parties that um, we read about, but he was very, very involved in their lives, mm -hmm. um, which started me thinking that Job's wife mm -hmm played her own role. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being the homemaker, she probably decorated the house, made sure the house, the, the, it wasn't just a, ho a, a house, it was a home. Right. Um, yeah. Doing the cakes, the baking, teaching the girls what to do, whatever. Right. So mothers do play their role, and it's a different right. role from that of a father. So um, it's, 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 it's just awesome. But we also have to remember that we need to be emotionally available for our children. Not just being present physically there, but to be emotionally involved. Um, and I reflect on my own life. Um, my fondest memories um, growing up was my dad playing cricket and football with me on our front lawn. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, when he did this, I saw where other youngsters in the community would come over and be involved. Um, so it, it gave me confidence. You know, um, he was my first coach. He helped me significantly. And the confidence enough to go out and try for my, um, my cricket team at school, right. you know, um, just because of my dad's presence there. Um, I also felt very proud in that he was mentoring other young people. Oh. And just looking around, my dad was the only dad there most of the time. Right. Um, so he played a part in other children's lives. Right. Right. Wow. Um, so I take it away from you. I, I, I like your observation because here is it that when we read about the parties mm -hmm. that Job's children used to have, I'm wondering maybe the mama was over there helping the children to decorate the house true, and true, the, true, the children true, true. to prepare for the party. And Job was not there, but he was present, meaning he's providing a different kind of, um, um, he's present in a different way. And, yeah. and for me, men and women just do parenting different. True. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, quite frankly, men are different from women in every cell of their body. <laughs> women have <laughs> XX, <laughs> men have XY. So, so therefore, our approach to parent is, parenting is just going to be different. Um, a child is playing football and the mother and father are there and the child falls down. The mommy runs onto the field, take up the boy, carry him off, dust him off. The father just look at him and says, is anything broken? No? Or in get, get up. up. Or in the get up. Or in the blood. Dust <laughs> off the no and go on again. <laughs> and, and the research is showing that the father's role in general is just to challenge the children. Yes. To challenge their children to be better. And I wanted to just, I just wanted to mention this because sometimes as mothers, we believe that when a father does plays with the children and that kind of thing, that that might not be sufficient, but that is a significant <laughs> part of the puzzle. <laughs> you see, we are here as men and women to complement each other in the raising of a child. And that, that is going to just look different yes. between us. We are feel fulfilling a different part of the puzzle. Yes, yes. But fathers, just need to be present. Yes. So hear me, I want you to forget the myth about quality time. Mm -hmm. Children don't need quality time, they just need time. Yes. They need mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. they need a lot of time. Yes. And we see, uh, um, we see a hint of that in the scripture. <laughs> in Deuteronomy 6.6, 6, it says that we must train our children, mm -hmm. um, um, we must be with our children. Um, it says this, always remember these commands I'm giving you today. Teach it to your children as you talk with them, when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, when you get up. And the, the, the thought here mm -hmm. that it leads with is when I'm doing life. That I'm doing life and I'm doing that life with my children before me. Yes, yes. Definitely. Time is important. In fact, I think children spell love time, you know, right. because they need a lot of time. You know, in fact, it is said that if you spend twice as much time with them and half as much money, 
it will mean our value more to them. They'll turn out even yes. better in life. Yes. yes, yes. And that is what I realized that there has been a negative impact on my children when they were hardly seeing me at their Christmas production at school and various production. They felt disappointed, they felt sad, and it impacted me. And I realized that I had to do something. I had to make a concerted effort to be more present in their life and just all their activities. Yeah. I'm now at their ballet recital, you know, gymnastics and swimming. Right. And it has really built a greater bond between us and they are loving it. And I am loving it too. Yes. Mm -hmm. just, and so, so I would say, boy, that your presence is far more important than any present that you want to buy them from a store. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. Um, I mentioned earlier about being emotionally available to them and going back to even the scenario of my father being my first coach and everything. Mm -hmm. It gave me confidence. It gave me confidence, but also with the other children who came over. Um, I found that many of the boys who came over and, and, and played with us, they went on to represent their schools in whatever they're doing. So they right. also right. got confidence as well, right. you know. Right. Right. So we can mentor in many ways. We can not just be a father to our own children. Mm -hmm. We can father others as well. Yeah, yeah. true. Right. You know that last song that we, last worship song that we did, Abba, uh -huh. I belong to you. Right. It struck me, you know, that because if we make ourselves um, available to our children, are present with our children, we're reinforcing that sense of belonging. You know yes. that they know yes. that they are our children, that they know that they mm -hmm. belong, right? That right. reinforces their identity. So mm -hmm. later on in life, they, you know, they're, they're not searching for themselves mm -hmm. and having yeah. all sorts of issues and trying to cope by all sorts of negative right. ways, yeah. you know, because they're they're firm in who they are. Yeah. They know right. their identity. They know who their father is. You know, right. they know who their parents are. Yeah. We need yeah, to be sure. our child's biggest cheerleader. We need to tell them constantly, we love them. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm proud that God yeah. put you in my life. Mm -hmm. I love the fact that you're right. here. You're working hard. Right. We need to cheer them on and let them know how much we love them and care for them. Yeah. That is what being, I mean, being emotionally involved in their life means right. that you are there for them yeah. emotionally and supporting them and yeah. giving them the confidence. Right. Yeah. And there are many children who have never heard their, their, their father said to them, I'm proud of you. Yes. Right, you right, know, right. Uh, or I, I love you. Yes. Right. You know, that right. can, that just the pat on the head, the hope. Yeah. Right. You know, these right. things are, are really important. Very, very, yeah. Yeah. very important. You know, I was thinking about what you said about your dad and how, how he, he, his presence mm -hmm. not only affected you, but his presence affected the Others. children around us. Right. Yes. Right. And it's not that he was only a coach, you know. But I believe that that activity taught the children discipline. Yes. It taught them a disciplined mm. approach right. Right? Right. Right. to life. And the truth is that as men, part of our role is also to discipline our children. And it's not politically correct nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> See, a lot of people don't talk about this too, too often nowadays. But, but it's definitely a biblical concept mm -hmm. that we as, as, as men, as parents, must be disciplining our children. Because we don't discipline our children, we are contributing to their demise. Of demand. course, of course. Mm -hmm. One of the saddest stories is that of Adonijah with King David. Mm -hmm. Adonijah was one of King David's children, and he ended up trying to rebel against his dad and lost his life. Mm -hmm. But the, the commentary in First Kings, there's just a line there that just speaks volumes about David's role in it. It says of David, his father, that's David, never rebuked him by saying why do you believe behave the way you do so what the, 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 the thing is saying is that david saw some deviant the behaviors in adonijah yes. and he never took never adonijah in a, to task yeah, about right, it right. and as a result he's not taking adonijah to task contributed to adonijah's demise right, right. so yes, yes. so as as parents and as fathers we have to be active yes. and present yes. Yes. in yes. the yes. children's life Very to the important. extent that we are keeping them sane. Yes. Sure. You know, sure. uh, I read one commentator that said, the book of Proverbs is Solomon's gift to his children from the mistakes his father did. Mm. <laughs> is that weird thing? And in that it says this, discipline your son, mm. for in that there is hope. Do not be a willing party mm. to, to his death. death. Uh -huh. So therefore, not disciplining our children mm -hmm. 
is partnering with their demand. Yeah. Yes. So as God right. we just need to step up. Yeah, man. Yeah. 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 And you know, yeah. what is interesting about that very passage, you know, Pastor Dwight, mm. is that notice that the, the, the re, that it's speak about rebuking him, but note what the rebuke was supposed to be. Just asking him why, why? do you behave yes. as if yes. you do, which yes. Yes. you know carries us today to a, 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 an issue that we probably have in Jamaica. For a lot of us, we associate discipline with punishment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That it's an infliction of pain, right. Right? right? And discipline is way, 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 way more than that. Discipline right. is about training. It's yeah, about it's correction. Wrong. It's about guidance. Yeah. You know, um, one definition I found was, you know, um, to make a disciple, that is someone who is being disciplined, mm -hmm. right? means a person who believes in the idea of the leader. We give our children ideas right. about how to live and right. tries to live according to those ideas. And we, and we have an example, the supreme example of Jesus with the disciples because yeah. that's what he was doing. Mm -hmm. He was making, so he was example. disciplining them mm -hmm. by discipling them. Right. You know, so for those three years that he, that he had them, they, he, they saw what he did, mm -hmm. how he reacted to situations, mm -hmm. how he exercised the power and authority of God, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. how he spoke, how he preached, how he taught. They saw his compassion. Yeah, they right, saw right, his right. concerns. Oh, okay. yes. You know, they saw how he lived. Right, and later on, we see them in Acts and other and other and other places. You know how they they themselves emulated that. You know, um, so when we are as fathers, right, and we are making disciples of our children, mm -hmm. yes. right, we are giving them a supreme blessing. Yes. Uh, Hebrews twelve uh, eleven verse eleven says puts it like this: No discipline is enjoyable while it's happening because some discipline might actually involve some pain and maybe even punishment <laughs> right, for wrong behavior. It says no discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterward, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living mm -hmm. for those who are trained in this way. If we want to enable our children to live successful, healthy lives, then we must yeah. discipline them by discipling them. Yes, right. yes. yes. And, and um, sometimes that discipleship, I'm going back to Pastor Paul's example. So, so his father actually ended up part parenting mm -hmm. other children in the yes. neighborhood. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Right? So I remember when I just became a Christian, um, there were some eras in my life that were not developed because my father didn't pass them on to me. And just to let you know, I said it earlier on that there are no perfect parents, right. there's mm -hmm. always going to be gaps. And, and as I became a Christian, a, a man by the name of Ricky Mahfoud discipled me. And he was not much older than I am, but he was the person who helped to round off those areas to create a sense of discipline yes. mm -hmm. in certain areas that I, that I had gaps in and just to yeah. make my life whole. And as men, we have the opportunity to disciple a nation. True. Mm -hmm. So True. sometimes some of you out there are managers, some of you are supervisors, so some of you just have influence over a certain amount of people. Mm -hmm. That is an opportunity for discipleship. That's an opportunity to contribute to their lives in areas that they might have gaps. And I just want to hail those men who are the non-biological fathers. <laughs> True. Like, True. like Pastor Paul's father, who, yes. who have just been out there just, just helping this nation and helping other children to grow. You know, the scripture says that it, well, not the scripture. There's a, there's a saying in Jamaica, it takes a village to raise a the child. child. That's true. And, and we all are part of this community, yes. this village, and we can all just raise children. Some of them will be grown, some of them will be younger. Mm -hmm. So what have we been saying here today? We have been attempting to say that you are part of the shift mm -hmm. generation. You are part of the generation mm -hmm. of that had has come up with an understanding of the role of men mm -hmm. in the lives of their children. And irrespective of where you are, maybe you never started out well, but you know, there's a song that said, don't watch the start, mm -hmm. watch the finish. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you are, you have the ability and the capacity to make a shift in your life. I want to introduce a young man who is going to just talk about his dad from a dope poet perspective and I want you to listen to him because this is what we all are, are trying to be. Just a wonderful dad. And he's on set now, so let's hear what he has to say. Good morning, TLC family. It is indeed a pleasure, an honor for me to be here with you again. 
Um, it's always, I always have a wonderful experience when worshiping with the TLC family. It is, I'm indeed grateful to be here again. Um, the title of this poem is Thank You, Father, and I hope that it blesses all the fathers out there. This poem is dedicated to you. Dad, I miss the abundance of words I have for you. Let me begin with thank you. My mother may have been my incubator, but you, sir, were my initiator. We all know that like tango, it takes two. So you are equally responsible for who I am and who I'm going to be. Half of you is half of me. In a world where your absence is felt like a punch to the throat, your presence is precious, a disease lands antidote. You may not hear it enough because entitlements rarely receive praise. And as the rock, your emotions often get tased with the expectation that you will suck it up like real men always do. Or society tends to forget that real men have feelings too. So to you, I'm grateful that you stood by me even when the fear in your gut was pushing you to run. Your back bears the evidence that you were ore covering even though you had none. The coarseness of your hands is proof of all the hard work you have done. And this poem is my small way of expressing how proud I am to be your son. Dad, now that I'm grown, I pray that, I, that I'm even half the man you are. Strong, but gentle. Wise, yet humble. I walk with no fear because you have always been there to help me when I stumble. I'm very careful when I speak because your discipline never fails to get me when I'm disrespectful. When I was a child and the target of bullies, it was your name that I called. I believe that even though I lost the battle, I would eventually win the war because come 3 p.m., my father would be pulling up in his car. Yes, I believed I would win in the end because eventually my father would come to defend. It was your name that I used to intimidate my enemies. It was your name that calmed all my antipathies. Dad, you are my hero. And this is just my small way of saying, I love you. If it were not for your presence, my feet would have trod a more sinister path. Your example is etched into my mind, and for my lifetime, it will last. Your faithfulness, resilience, and candor are traits I have adopted. Your light has preserved this soul from being corrupted, and so there is no amount of zeros that can be placed on your value. You have paved the way for our future generations to walk through. Dad, the abundance of words I have for you could fill a cathedral, but let me end right here the very same way I began and say thank you. Powerful. Absolutely powerful. I just want to share a word that the Lord laid on Pastor Jones' heart, just to continue the same theme of just affirming fathers. That's the entire theme for this celebration today, affirmation of fathers. And so Pastor Joan wrote, as she heard from the Lord, as I came into the room, as this morning, I sense the Holy Spirit there in great measure. He is here for a great job. The Holy Spirit came upon me with great might, and I had a sensing that he was concerned about the men. He said, around this time each year, Father's Day, some men have feelings of hopelessness and being less than. These men want change, and I wept. I prayed for them for hope and new beginnings. He turned my attention to the specific men on the platform in the room, the musicians, the singers, the panel, and the chairman. God says these are his men. He has called them all. A heavy anointing of the land is given to them. He referred to the 12 disciples, and I heard that just as they overturned the world, so the Lord will use these men to overturn the world. He said, count them. Count these men. When I did, it was 12. I wept. The Lord said, he is on this service, and what is being done, he is doing something supernatural. Amen. He is on the words, the song, the music. It is going out to the men who hear and watch this service. Receive the healing and the affirmation. 
from the Lord. Amen. Praise Amen. The name Amen. of the Lord. Hallelujah. What a powerful yeah. word and what a powerful mm -hmm. poem. Um, yes. uh, I was going to actually say to you know, that I feel like the Spirit of God is here just doing a significant work mm -hmm. yes. in, in the lives of the men that are listening online. And now Pastor John has just, just added to that and even in the lives of the men here in the studio. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, where are you in your life as a man? Mm -hmm. Where are you in your life? You know, we are called to be provider, protector, and just present in our children's lives and so much more. And I believe that you, even as you are part of the shift generation, that the Lord has been speaking to your heart. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, what is your next move? Mm -hmm. You know, some of us need to surrender totally to God as our forgiver and our leader as part of the puzzle because you have tried it on your own and you realize that you just can't do it on your own. But God can come alongside you, forgive your sins and, and move you forward in this way. Maybe you are not even sort of looking at the Lord because you had a, a poor relationship with your dad and God re represents himself as father. Maybe where you need to start is by, by saying, I forgive you to your own father. I want you to hear something about God that he's not your father. Mm -hmm. He is the everlasting father. The mm -hmm. one who will never leave you nor forsake you. The one who will be with you mm -hmm. through thick and thin. Mm -hmm. The one who will, who will uphold you with his righteous right hand. Though everybody else forsakes you, that God the father never. will never forsake never. you. Where are you this morning? Maybe you need... Just somebody to pray over you. Pray that forgiveness, pray that healing that Pastor John, John prophesied from the Lord today. So we're going to just spend some time in prayer now. And I'm going to ask the panel, we can pray in this direction, starting with Pastor Paul. Mm -hmm. And as we pray, just receive these prayers as just anointed prayers specifically for you. Pastor, I want to pray for the fathers who worry if they can be a good father. Or it could be that they wonder if no is too late for them to try to be a good father. So that's my prayer. So Lord, we just come to you as a good, good father. Yes. We just thank you, Lord, that you are ever present and you are there for us continually. For the fathers, Lord, who are not sure if it's too late or they don't know, they worry about being a good father. Mm -hmm. We just ask you to walk alongside them, to hold their hand, yes. even as they commit to be good fathers. Hold their hand, Lord. Guide them. Direct them. Holy Spirit, we ask you to, so, to guide them to, to the truth that they can start even now. It's never too late. And that whatever happened in the past, you can take it from here and go forward with them. So we just ask for, we pray for strength for them. We pray that, Lord Jesus, they'll have a focus. They'll, in you, they can depend on knowing that you are directing their steps. Right. So Lord, we just, we just thank you and we just praise you for what you are going to do with fathers who are committed even from today that going forward, things are going to change. Things are going to be different. I will now play a part and not worry as to whether I can still be a good father. I'm going to put my trust and confidence in God and let him guide my feet. So we just say thank you now, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 If you have been here and you have been listening to us and as a dad you have never said yes to Jesus as Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. It's more about what is in your heart than the words that you actually say. But if you are saying, Father, right now I want to be a good dad and I realize that that starts by knowing you and you want to say yes to him, let's help me to say a prayer by which you say yes to him. So let's Let's bow our heads. So let's say something like this with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for being my good father. And I want to be a good father. And this begins by knowing you. So in Jesus' name, I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus' sacrifice for my behalf. I invite you to forgive me of my sin, ask to forgive me of my sin, 
and invite Jesus into my heart. Make me whole. Amen. If you said that for the first time or after a long time, I want you to hear that the good, good Father is delighted that you have made that move and he is Abba Father. He's never going to leave you nor forsake you and as you turn your heart and life to him, he is going to train you and teach you to be a good father and just improve your life in general. He's going to teach you things about you that you never knew. You know, today we have been talking about just being a provider, a protector, and being present. And God the Father is all of those things and so much more. Mm -hmm. So as we close out this service, we just want to sing a worship to him as our good Abba Father. And I invite you to join us. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. This has been a great day. Amen.